Okay, it's 6 o'clock. We'll go ahead and get it started. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Commissioner Sayer if he'd lead us in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day, for this uh, freedom that we have in this country, and help us to understand that these freedoms that we have, a uh, cost was involved, and uh, lives were lost, and blood was shed for these freedoms, and may we never forget that. And Lord, we just pray for our uh, emergency service, services here locally, our EMS, Sheriff's Department, Fire Department. We just pray, Lord, for protection for these guys. And Lord, we just pray that uh, for our soldiers across the land that you would be with these and uh, protect them. And Lord, be with us tonight and help us to make the best decisions for all the people of Hart County. In the name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'll call to order the Tuesday, September 10th, 2019 meeting of the Hart County Board of Commissioners. We'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. Uh, Got a few more items on the agenda, but it should be a relatively quick meeting. Um, first item of business tonight will be to approve the agenda. I know we have some amendments. Uh, I'd like to add uh, Miss Anna Strickland to give you a brief update under invited guests on uh, the jail study we haven't done. And under old business for B, a uh, yearly resolution we have to do for the solid waste fund to get reimbursement from the state on the all help offset the cost of maintaining the landfill. Okay. All right, with those changes, can I get a motion that we approve the agenda as amended? I, I make that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Teasel. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is approved minutes of the previous meetings. You got the August 27, 2019 minutes in your packet. Can I get a motion that we approve? I make a no motion. Changes? I make a motion that we approve the 827 19 I'll, minutes. I'll give a second. I have a motion by Commissioner Teasley and a second by Commissioner Carter that we approve the minutes um, of the August 27th meeting. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is remarks by invited <coughs> guests, committees, and authorities. At this time, I'd like to recognize Ms. Anna Strickland if she'll come forward and give us an update on the jail. There's a few items I'd like to give an update on, but it, it will be brief. But thank you all for having me on such short notice. Mm -hmm. I'm typically in class, um, but class was canceled, so I'm really thrilled um, in many <laughs> ways to be here with you all instead. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, a few updates real quickly. So. Uh, we did hear back from the College of Engineering, and they will be sending a student team. It's seniors uh, working on their senior capstone project, and they'll be working on that jail site feasibility study. So they'll be making a visit to our community um, by the end of the month, and we'll keep you in the loop about when they will be here. So what that process looks like, they'll have that initial um, visit with you all, and then they'll present a midpoint um, presentation around December, and then present their final recommendations um, in May. So just to give you a timeline of how that works. And we're also excited to report that we have a, a Master's of Public Administration student team uh, tag teaming the uh, cost analysis for, for the jail. So that's something that um, stay tuned because the students are ramping up with their schoolwork this semester and we'll probably be meeting locally and have the students come in. That's a, that's a key part of what we do. Um, yes, you have tools to make decisions, but we really want to get those students real world um, learning experiences and, and many of them have never been to Hart County or Northeast Georgia for that matter So we're thrilled for them to come and show Hart County off along with that You all are aware um, that Hart County was chosen as one of the two pilot communities for the vice president for public service and outreaches um, Cyber arch initiative, so we are excited that we will be hosting a cybersecurity workshop training on October 11th and so really the entire community is invited to that. Um, the first, it'll be limited to the first 50 people who register, it's free. 
um, lunches provided. But really, the curriculum and the workshop is targeted toward city employees, county employees, school system employees, small business owners, or you know, your industrial and your manufacturing sector, especially the HR folks with that. Anybody who's an end user at a computer. Um, so we, we want to get that on your radar. And uh, like I said, registration is open. So if you want more, more information on that, I'll be happy to pass it along. And then a final project just to get this um, on your radar for this fall. So Archway doesn't always partner with higher ed, with UGA for, for everything that we do. That's A-OK. -okay. Um, but that's kind of my role is to be a resource connector. Um, something that we're really excited about, our health and wellness subgroup that Archway helps facilitate will be partnering with MedLink to offer a mental health first aid training um, on October 15th for law enforcement, emergency responders. Um, that was something that was really important for the group to give everyone that opportunity. And what's exciting about that is that CEUs will be offered and then um, a certification will also be offered that's valid um, for up to three years. So I wanted to get those, those four items um, on your radar for this fall. And of course, I'll be coming back to provide other updates as we have them. Where will that training be about to be? I probably should give you more detail, shouldn't I? So the Cyber Arts training, um, that workshop, that will be at the Ag Center. And that will be um, from 8 to 1 p.m. That's an early, early start. And then the mental health first aid training, that will be at our adult learning center. And that will be from 8.30 to, to 5. They said we rarely, you know, keep folks until 5. And they're completely understanding of the fact that um, the people who attend are very busy and will probably be coming in and out. They're A-OK. -okay. okay. What all will the mental health training cover? Yes, so that's <clears throat> certainly not my area of expertise, but I have literature and a flyer on everything that they cover. But um, I know that participants walk away with a five-step process that they cover um, in the event of an emergency with someone, and they go through that process and learn that. But I do, I have uh, literature flyers on the Cyber Arch Summit, the Cybersecurity Summit, and I have the registration forms and the literature of everything that will be covered for that mental health first aid training provided by MedLink. They've been you an have excellent that partner. With you? I sure do. I'd like to have, I guess. I'll so. go ahead and put one in y'all's boxes. It, it's a <clears> lot <throat> of paper. I didn't want to <laughs> throw paper at y'all, but I'll be happy to, yeah. to do that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, if, if one you request. Don't. Uh, when we start talking about the jail, if we have any meetings, that those meetings be in the evenings after six, um, so that we can all attend. It's hard for everybody to get there uh, during the day, so we definitely would like to request that. Okay. Um, and give us as much notice as possible. Certainly, we can do that. And, and the student team, they typically need to be back by five, but I'll be happy to come and meet with you uh, okay. after the fact. Okay, anything else? But I'll do my best to get them after six if at all possible. Okay. Thank anything you. Else? Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Anna. Okay, moving on down the agenda. Reports by constitutional officers and department heads. Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think what I have is on the uh, business. Okay. Uh, can the administrator's report? Uh, I have nothing tonight. I'll be doing over the budget. Okay. Um, chairman's report, the August financial dashboard review. Um, we'll take a look at uh, that. Let's look at, uh, I updated that today. We got our TAVT tax money in. I noticed it was zero date, down here. So I put that back in. So I'm going to put the new one up on the screen. Okay. And that's the only thing that changed, right? No, nothing else. Okay. Other than the total, the total revenue. Wow. I knew it would be the largest one we got so far. Wow. Good news. Um, so looking at our financial dashboard, um, our revenues and expenditures per month are one million twenty-two thousand one hundred and seventy dollars. Uh, we'll take a quick snapshot at it. Our actual revenues for August, which is um, for August, which is the eleventh month of our fiscal year was $597,783 uh, against a target of $1,022,170. Um, we expected that to be a miss, and that's why it's red, uh, and that's due to property taxes coming in heavy in October, November, and December uh, when they were due. Uh, 
Actual expenses came in under budget at $914,178. And our delta between the revenues and expenses is $890,000 and some change. I'm not going to try to do the math in my head. Um, so looking on down, um, right now we're still positive uh, with revenues over expenses. And uh, we'll look at our key revenue drivers or real property taxes. Uh, on real property, it's red. And again, that goes back to the collections being in November, December, and January. Uh, LOST, uh, again, another record that I don't, I don't remember seeing us get $246,000 a month. In LOST or SPLOST. I mean, the, the revenue splitting is percentages are different, but um, you can see that's continuing to go up. Uh, EMS fees came in at 110,107. Um, again, another big month for it as well. And vehicle title <coughs> fee uh, against a target of 56,000 came in at 90,000. Uh, again, just goes to show how what kind of vibrant economy we have here. And people are buying a lot of cars for that to be uh, that high. So it's almost double our um, uh, budgeted line. I mean, anybody have any questions over the uh, financial dashboard? We're heading into the last month of the fiscal year in a very solid position with roughly $900,000 of revenue, revenues exceeding expenditures. So very solid year again. Uh, and I want to commend uh, my colleagues on the board as well as our county administrator and department heads for uh, taking care of the county's tax money. So uh, good job so far. Let's keep it going. Um, any questions on the financial dashboard? All right. I have had a couple of inquiries. Um, I don't want to rub any salt in any wounds, but I feel like it's appropriate that we report this out. Uh, and this goes back to the Bowersville situation on the speed bumps. If the county has reimbursed Bowersville, no, the county has not. Um, and uh, I just want to say that um, and uh, just leave it at that. Uh, moving forward um, with commissioner's reports, District 1. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. District 2. Nothing at this time. District 3. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. District 4. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. All right, moving on into old business, item 12A, <clears throat> addendum to FY20 legacy link agreement. Um, you got that in the packet. Uh, can I get a motion that we approve? So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Oglesby and a second by Commissioner Teasley that we approve the amendment, the, the addendum to the agreement for FY20. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the one we amended, uh, the resolution for the uh, solid waste so that we can get reimbursed. Got to get a motion that we approve this resolution. I make a motion we approve this resolution. I have a motion by... <laughs> He was louder. He'll flip a coin. He's uh, louder. Commissioner He's Commissioner Sayer and second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Moving into new business, item 13. Item 13A, we've got a request from the Sheriff's Office uh, to give credit for experience, <clears throat> which is along our and in line with our policy. Um, this so is move, to Mr. give Chairman. credit for four years for a deputy that has been hired in uh, we could make that retroactive to the higher date. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just okay. a paper. Yeah. Yeah. Have a motion by Commissioner Oglesby. Is there a second? Second. A second by Commissioner Teasley. I bet you out there, Marshal. <laughs> Any more discussion? Yeah. Public. I got a question. All right. What does that last sentence mean? This will only affect pay grade longevity and not benefit time from the new hire. Correct. Reason, new hire standard starts off at the beginning for the benefits to vacation time, PTO time, all that. Okay. That remains the same. All the four years of effect is just the pay grade itself. Just pay hourly. Grade. Pay grade will go up or pay scale will go up. Pay scale go up, the benefit stays benefit the same. Stays Correct. Right. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. 
Next item on the agenda, item 13B, similar request, credit for experience in 911. Uh, the request is that uh, a 911 <coughs> communications officer receive credit for four years of experience. This so person moved. is certified and was worked in Edward County for five years. So have a motion by Commissioner Carter. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item 13C, job description for solid waste laborer. Um, Joe, you wanna? Uh, basically what this is, we've had a person doing this job for several years. Uh, we got to looking for the job description, we didn't have a job description for them. So just to make it official and being with the policy, this is uh, Luana and uh, Greg came up and, and fixed the, the policy uh, job description that's attached. We just need to need it approved to, to fall into the policy. Just Could I ask that we add something to sure. this? You know, it talks about major duties. We we'll kind of have it in there, but not limited to. I just say something about um, along the lines of of other other functions as assigned or whatever. I mean, because okay. it's going to be hard to, yeah, all, to stay all, within yeah, that. All of them got that last. Catcher on the end of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, with that change, can I get a motion that we approve the uh, job description for solid waste labor? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Carter. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item 13D, request to bid the 2020 youth basketball uniforms. Gonna get a motion that we send this out for approval. To move. For bids rather, I'm sorry. To move. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Oglesby and a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is FY20 general fund draft budget review. <clears throat> Terrell, I'll let you be more up to date on this than I am. So I'll let you take this one. Basically, I've had the budget, uh, general fund budget for the last four or five weeks. We've had a budget meeting with any department uh, had a, 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 a wish or want, I hire them what we have come through my office. Uh, you met with those, all of those in the same night, um, and we didn't make any changes to the, the initial budget. Uh, so the numbers you've got are good. Uh, there's been no changes made to it since your notebook was issued. And I'll run through by the departments. Uh, general government, there was an increase of $50,000, and that went into uh, 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 contingency. We increase contingency because uh, we, we have things come up during the year that we just don't budget for. Uh, executive went up 2.9 percent. Uh, and by the way, all of these budgets has got a coal in them for the employees and all the 5 percent insurance increase we had in the premium too. That's in, our, in this budget. Uh, uh, Board of Elections went up significantly. That's because we're going to have three elections in the coming year. We didn't have any elections in the past year. Uh, uh, finance administration stayed the same. Law stayed the same. Data processing went up primarily because of computer replacement in the probate office and magistrate's office. We had to replace those computers. So that's, that's where the increase in that budget came from. Tax commissions was the same. Basically, $36 more than it was last year. Uh, and by the way, these department heads and these elected officials turned in his budget yourself. I know he did, that didn't make the first cut in none of these budgets, okay? I put it in their hands. I said, you, you tell us the easiest way to do it. They turned their budgets in, and most of them was at or below what they asked for last year. Um, so the tax assessors was up 0.3%. Uh, uh, risk management went up, and that's because our insurance rate went up, uh, our liability insurance and building on, uh, insurance on the buildings. Um, general government buildings came down. We put a roof on last year. We're not putting on this year, I hope. Uh, so that's a $50,000 reduction. Um, 
General Administration fees stayed the same. Superior Court went up $10,000 because they're having more weeks of court and bailiff's um, salaries went up in that. Um, uh, the clerk of courts was uh, actually went down $800 uh, from last year's. District Attorney stayed the same. Magistrate Court went up slightly. That was insurance and cover. Uh, probate <coughs> Court came down slightly. That's uh, uh, things we didn't buy last year. Didn't, don't have to buy this year that we had to buy last year. Uh, juvenile court stayed the same. Grand jury stayed the same. Law library stayed the same. Uh, public defender went up 3.7%. Uh, Y'all approved that back uh, in June, I think. Uh, Board of Legalization uh, went down. That was Frankie's request. It went down $2,300 from last year. The sheriff went up. <coughs> 4.9%, uh, and that's, that's mostly insurance. The department with the largest amount of in, uh, employees got a bigger hit on the insurance than anybody else. So the, that's probably the, the why that one went up that amount of money. Uh, jail operations came down. We backed off on the amount of money we was uh, budgeting for housing prisoners. I hope we didn't burn ourselves, but we did. Uh, we had a trend of it going back down, so we went with that trend. Uh, Adult corrections, that looks like it went up she minds, but I just moved that $3,600 out from under the roads where I had it at and put them into them will pay them straight out of that account. Uh, the number didn't change from last year. It's just moved into a different place. Uh, EMS was down slightly. Uh, the corner went up some. That's just because the number of cases averaged out going up. Uh, 911, which is Paul address and office, that was mainly COLA and insurance. Uh, GIS, that remained the same as a part-time employee in a part-time <coughs> position, so that didn't change. Uh, animal control went up slightly. That was from COLA and insurance. Uh, Merchant management went up by 800. That was COLA and insurance. Public work stayed the same. Uh, road department went up, and that's primarily insurance and COLA. Uh, maintenance shop came down slightly. Health department remained the same. Uh, defects remain the same. Uh, the, the senior center, that's not correct. Theirs actually stayed the same. It didn't drop $7,500. I don't know why that's in there. We'll go over the other budget to see if that, that's not correct. Transit went up because we're having more riders. Uh, recreation went up a half percent. The library administration, uh, that's not correct. I done copied something wrong. Library stayed the same as last year. Uh, 4-H stayed the same. Economic development dropped 150,000. It was moved down to the other one that you see at the bottom, the 9,000 other finance and stuff. Most of that money went to there. We had to change the way we account for the money we're pulling out of splosh and running through. So that's where that, that change came in at. Uh, the rest of the airport authority stayed the same. Community action stayed the same. Adult uh, literacy stayed the same. And the other finance that went up from the money that was taken away from economic development. Okay. That number's not right at the bottom, is it? That 113,833? Correct. That, that, that number's about right. We'll go and get the other budget in there. Get this this way, so. This This is revenue. Uh, you'll see the Back to the taxes, that's the main thing. You see there, the, the idea grew enough in new growth to increase the revenue from the, the property taxes by $167, I believe it was, $166,000. Uh, that's where the new growth, after taking the roll back, the rest of the revenue stayed pretty much the same, up and down just a little bit, depending on how it was going uh, for the year's average. Um, uh, my machine not going to work. Uh, and again, you'll see there's very little changes in the revenue up and down over over the whole uh, revenue scheme. <coughs> Anything y'all see catches your eye, and you want to go back and look at it, we'll be glad to do it. Uh, if you'll notice, there's, there's one pretty good change: the uh, concessions from the rec department that dropped considerably because we're not having concessions anymore, it's the football games or at the 
at the high school field. Uh, those are just miscellaneous things there. Uh, basically, you walk back out, the revenue uh, went from 12 265.40 to 12 476.790, which balances out the, the expenditures on the budget. There, there it is. That's, uh, the budget increased 113833 from last year, a 0.9% increase. And like I said, that includes the COLA and the 5% health insurance premium increase. So that's, if this suits y'all and you want, don't want to address anything else in the budget, what we need to do is potentially approve the, approve the draft budget so we can advertise it. Um, and following this, it's got your tax roll back. Uh, so that, that's the motion we need at some point so we can officially advertise it to, to, to say when y'all are actually going to draft it. I'll so we can proceed. Okay. I'll suck it. I have a motion by Commissioner Ogle has been a second by Commissioner Sayer. Any more discussion? It's just so that we can go ahead and move forward with the advertising. Uh, public comment. If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, second part to this, item 13F, this is a 2019 tax year tentative millage rate, and we're looking at 5.890 as a rollback. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, the half a mil for EMS, is that still going to apply? Uh, yes, that comes in. That, that's not, okay. that, that's still be on top of it. Okay. It'd be a total millage rate. <clears throat> I just didn't see it listed in here. Uh, That's just, what I was just so people know, the the effect of lost taxes, the, the one percent special tax sales tax, it offsets our millage rate by two point three four one mills. What, what it would be if we done like other counties and applied it somewhere else. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the reduction in, in the millage rate, bec just because of loss. And we use 100% of that money to roll back the millage rate. Correct. We don't use any of it for anything else. No, hey, it all goes straight I, in. I was, uh, we, I, I was, I'm sorry. We talked about that earlier. Uh, <clears throat> this was a record month of $246,000. <clears> and uh, just so you'll know what you're looking at, there, that first number is the 203 money, insurance premium money, the one. One million two hundred and sixty-three thousand. That's what it is. And these numbers come from the state. I don't. I don't make them up. I go to their website and pick them up. And uh, what they're estimating for the loss to be next year is two point three million four hundred and nine hundred and thirty-seven dollars. But that's that's the form I have to fill out and send into the state along with our, our packet every year. And that's what the rollback looks like. Oh, let me blow it up. I was thinking that the loss had to be used to roll back property tax. No. It don't have to be. No, it can, it can be specified out for special special okay. things. Right. Uh, we, this Park County has always used it. <coughs> you can't see that very well. I'll read the numbers off too. When, the, when that tax was first uh, approved by the voters, the board of commissioners at that time, that you had to use it for a tax, a tax property tax rollback year one. But the board of commissioners at that time uh, voted to make that a permanent uh, rollback. That said, I mean, that, that really can't uh, bind a future board, but all future boards will follow it. Uh, the millage rate last year was, was 5.961. Yeah. Uh, rollback is 5.890. All right, anybody have any questions? If not, can I get a motion that we approve the tentative millage rate of 5.89 and move forward with advertising? I'll make a motion. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer, second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Public comment? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. <coughs> Next item on the agenda, Terrell, I want to commend you and the department heads for doing a good job putting this together. Uh -huh. I'm and up here uh, talking, but the department heads and the constitution law firm work. And that's why I made, made sure to yeah. mention them. Um, but good job. We appreciate your efforts as well as pulling all this together for us. Uh, item 13, 
G, intergovernmental agreement between the Hart County, the Hart County Industrial Building Authority and the Hart County Water and Sewer Authority. The um, agreement which was pre presented to you in your packet, it's, it's a fairly simple agreement, even though it's fairly lengthy. Um, it's a lawyer document, but uh, <laughs> the, just to give you the substance of it, this is what we might call the Livonia Sewer Extension Project to Gateway and the other industrial uh, properties at I-85. There are three areas of responsibility, and just to kind of summarize them, the Industrial Building Authority is project manager or manages this project. Uh, and it's done with grants and uh, economic development supplies. The Board of Commissioners commits to paying for it with the economic development supplies allocation. And then the Water and Sewer Authority commits to owning it and operating it. And that's basically what this does. It is. <clears throat> It's a project that will increase the sewer capacity for all of the industrial properties uh, up there at I-85. And um, it, um, it, it is basically just that, that the IBA manages the construction, uh, the county uses the splashed funds for its portion, <laughs> That was, by, by the way, that, that specifically is a $780,000 project, and there is an ARC grant of 600000 and then local matching funds of 180000 and that will be coming from the economic development block, 180000 And then the Water Authority commits to ultimately taking ownership and operation of it. Okay. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, any if questions? There are it's three a, signature a, pages, Mr. Chairman. Okay. One place in here says that the IBA will administer this grant. That's right. That, that's yep. usually done local here. Is that, is that going well, to be? yeah, that's, uh, I'm not sure of the fineries of that. I expect it will largely be here, though. I know. The ladies in the office, you can take care of all that, paying the bills and all that. I just wonder if that was going to change on this. The ultimate responsibility would be that of the IBA. Sure. Uh, we have to do picking with our accounting stuff. Uh, so now, we'll send a <coughs> paper trail between the IBA and us and the vendors. Even though we may write the check, we've got to read that paper trail every Okay. Yeah, it does. That, that answered my question. Thank you. I make a motion we enter this agreement. Second. I have a motion and a second that we enter in this agreement uh, <clears throat> with IBA and the Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, any more discussion? Public comment? Not. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is a public comment section of our meeting. If somebody would like to address the Board of Commissioners, you'd be more than welcome to come to the podium. Uh, anybody for public comment? Nobody for public comment? Could I get a motion that we go into executive session for personnel and litigation? So moved. Have a motion by Commissioner Teasley. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously.